Coming up next, it's a UFC heavyweight showdown. All right, so here he is, one of the more prolific takedown artists in the UFC at present. And when you get some praise from Daniel Cormier, when it comes to your offensive takedown game, you know you're doing something right. And we talk about wrestlers and judo players and grapplers, but this guy just combines all of that. He is able to use foot sweeps from the grappling game. He is able to use throws from judo, and he's able to use wrestling in the, from the wrestling game to take people down. He has an array of takedowns at his disposal, and he uses every single one of them from the speed of the level change to the timing to the knowledge of where to go next when the guy starts to defend, he's truly, truly something special. I don't think he could take you down, but tonight he doesn't have to. So in have this to. matchup, prevailing wisdom is he'll be able to get this fight to the canvas. Well, we probably trot out the term well-rounded in modern-day mixed martial arts more than we should, but this fighter certainly fits the bill. Oh, 110%. He can do everything inside the octagon. Where he is most comfortable is inside of that eight-sided structure right. where most men are terrified of being. But for this gentleman, he only wants to be there. When you try to wrestle him, he's able to defend takedowns. If you dare stand and strike with him, he can knock you out. He's got all the tools necessary to become a UFC champion. His first martial art, mixed martial arts, <laughs> and that's not always the case. He believes that he should have a lot of advantages in this matchup tonight. Our tale of the tape for this heavyweight fight. So more than 15 years, the gap in age between these two fighters with big differences in height and reach. And now for the official introductions, we go inside the octagon where we find the venerable Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Eve Loving. Now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. It's time! Five rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a freestyle fighter. Make his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet six inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds. The Ghost! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 14 wins, four losses. He stands five feet ten inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds, fighting out of Busan, South Korea. Okay, guys, protect yourself at all time, obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your corner. They touch him up, and we are underway. Ready? Well, what an unbelievable venue and backdrop for this mixed martial arts event here tonight. You know, the first stadium show we ever did was at Rogers Center in Toronto. Here we are at the Scotiabank tonight. UFC 129, 50,000 fans. But tonight, we're in Toronto, the Scotiabank Arena, which has also been home for some great UFC title fights. Oh, really using his reach advantage there with that land, DC. Well, defense doesn't necessarily win championships in MMA, but he's doing a nice job blocking these shots. All right, so there's the early takedown. He told us on Thursday he didn't necessarily see a path to victory if he couldn't get takedowns. That is certainly a good sign. Right away, he got the takedown. I don't believe they could have imagined that it would work so well so early. Great job. And he comes through with a big knee. We got to fight, folks. Oh, 
stuffs the takedown without issue. And there comes the separation now. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this jump. Oh, eats a knee. All right, so he finally gets the takedown here. He kept on trying, stayed committed. He told us before the fight, at some point, I'm going to be able to take him down, and that's exactly the way it played out. All right, so he postures up here and now figures to rain down some ground strikes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty from this position. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Oh, he's going for his arm now. Oh, wow, oh! Why is he not recognizing this right now? He's got to recognize this is dangerous. This is a dangerous position. And this might just be a matter of time. in the fight. All right, side control now, DC. When you get side control in the fight, what are you looking at? When I get to the side control of the fight, and I believe this young man should do the same thing, it's secure first. Grab everything in tight. Make sure your elbows are in. Make sure you've got something locked in so your opponent doesn't just squirm away. Punch short punches, but try to make the opponent make a choice. Either he turns back into you, you take your front headlock, or he turns into opposite direction, you throw your hook in, and you start looking to get a choke off. Down into his mouth. Push off his head and push. He's a hook. 90 seconds to go. This is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah. No pity pat to this guy. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. Choi's back in full now. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. Choi going to work here from guard. Nice combination there. Everything he throws is with fight-ending intentions. Oh, beautiful jab by him there, really taking advantage of what is an obvious edge and reach. All right, he closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Trying to hammer that lead leg. Look at how he turns his hip into that leg. Yeah, he mixed it all up. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Oh, there's a takedown attempt. Oh, uh, tags him with the left, so the right hand has been there. Now he goes left hand. When you're able to fight from both sides, you become really dangerous. Oh, he heard a battle of the jab. So there's that takedown defense on full display yet again. He does a fantastic job of squaring up his hips, getting his legs back, and understanding not to allow his opponent to get going on his takedown finish. He might get a finish here. All right, nice job there by the corner after that previous round as our next round gets underway. And their fighter is undeterred. He was close on the submission in the previous round. He's going to get right back to it. He's like a dog on a bone. He's going to continue to attack, attack, attack until he eventually gets what he wants. You don't know when that leg kick's coming. Look at him working at trying to shut the liver down. Nice strike. 
Well, there's a takedown attempt. No surprise that he would go for it there, but unable to get the fight to the ground. Whenever your opponent knows that you're going to try to take him down, you have to disguise it. He did not disguise it. He tried to just shoot a blind shot. It got defended, as you would expect it. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. Look at him yank the head and land that beautiful punch in the clinch. Got the single ball on top. Nice connection with the punch there. It's hard to recall time in the past that his boxing looked this sharp. He's never looked this good. Well, he has certainly found the range and staying pretty busy here on the feet. He's being busy, but it's also the timing and the accuracy that's allowing him to land so many attacks. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. Oh, nice hook by him there. Not necessarily with full power, but certainly found the desired target. He's throwing those shots to damage your opponent and set up another shot down the middle. Takedown defense holds up. All right, well, he's landed some good shots tonight, but there's no three-piece, there's no soda. More often than not, it's one and done. He's not even getting a combination. I mean, hey. if you're going to sit there at the drive-thru, <laughs> order a combination, take the soda with your food, give him the right hand behind the jab, give him the hook behind the right hand, jab, right hand, hook, that's two pieces of chicken and a biscuit, finish him off with the uppercut, that is your soda. I mean, come on, man, let this guy have the whole thing. Big body kick lands. Big powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. A little struggle here now for position in the clinch, and we see a lot of these situations in mixed martial arts where both fighters sort of end up getting comfortable here when there isn't a whole lot going on. And the moment somebody gets comfortable, the moment that somebody decides to relax, the moment you'll see a takedown or somebody really speed out ahead of their opponent. You gotta be aware when you're chest to chest in this 50-50 position. Oh, lands another punch there. Not a mean guy, he's just doing the smart thing. Oh, he has to be attacking that cut, John. I mean, if he's not, then he's doing his opponent a favor. Attack that cut, make him pay for it. Look at the whip action that comes from him throwing that kick. Continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots. Man, as he landed a high volume of strikes here in round two, definitely picking up the pace after round one. So he got the message from the corner, and now he is taking control of this second round. Great punch landed with so much power. Wow, actually got the takedown. Oh, it looks like he's got him in a crucifix now, DC. A lot of body weight from the top position. How does he go about trying to finish this fight? He just needs to stay heavy. He's got to keep his weight down. He's got to be working, but not working recklessly because this is a position that you can escape. Make sure you secure your opponent, and make sure you secure your opponent, land strikes that matter, and end this fight. All right, north-south position here. We'll see if the crowd can be mature about this, DC. Final minute. I mean, how many can he take? 45 seconds remain in the round. All right, half guard now, not a fighter you want in half guard against you for the bottom fighter. What does he need to do? He needs to secure his underhook. He's got to be fighting, fighting, fighting for underhook. One of the most key things you can do as a bottom fighter stuck in half guard is try to frame. You frame and push your opponent away from you. By pushing him away from you, he will then want to come back into you. Right. It's like when I push you back, you want to go forward. So as he comes forward, hand goes off the face, let it slip into an underhook, build up your elbow, then go chase your single leg. This is high-level grappling, John, from a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt named Daniel Corbin. All right, round three coming up next. All right, a lot of tremendous striking action in that last round, DC. I know you don't have a telestrator, but take us through the replay. I mean, I would love to have my telestrator right now. That was a great display of high-level mixed martial arts striking. Both combatants stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and let it all hang out. Let's get back out here and work on that fight. He's 
slice broke open good. There's a lot of blood. Can't go much longer with a cut like this. We need a finish in the end. You ready? You ready? Third round underway. Well, just as he did the previous round, continuing to land a high number of strikes here, and he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down. Scary, scary proposition for the opponent. Well, it looks like he's trying to set up the takedown. There's the attempt. Single collar tie now. Really timing his shots nicely. Good tempo, very accurate, finding the range with relative ease. Yeah, he's doing a great job of really overwhelming his opponent with activity. Big punch land. And with authority, goes to the judo throw right into side control. He's in side control. He's got a ton of options. A lot of top pressure being applied here. And he landed the right hand there. Oh, he's got him in a crucifix now, DC. All of that body weight on his opponent. He's got all the weight on the upper body. His feet are free to do whatever. But the arm stuck between the legs. He's now going to start dropping hammer fists. He's going to start dropping elbows. This is one of the nastiest positions in all of fighting. Let's go. We got a scramble here. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. How fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter. He's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Trying for a submission now. just be a matter of time. And that will do it! Oh! <laughs> yeah, that is high-level grappling right there as he gets the win tonight here by way of submission. And he bided his time there. He stayed patient, waited for an opening, and then when it was there, he certainly capitalized to get the tap here tonight. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission, though. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger and finishing fights. So there he is, your winner by submission. That is a finish they will likely be talking about for some time. Big win, major statement made to the rest of this division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve LeBing has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 15 seconds of round number three. To claim the winner by tap out, the goal. All right, so there he is, all smiles, and rightfully so, after he gets the job done by submission tonight. You told me off the air before the fight that he was going to submit him, and that's exactly what happened. Man. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard. And his opponent is known to lay in the guard. He made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory.